What is happening guys? My name is Chris. And I'm Paul. And welcome to what's gonna be the last episode of that tattoo show for 20 motherfucking 20. Can you believe it? I know, it's mad. <laughs> we all made it. We Congratulations everybody, you got to the end of this fucking shit year. You know? Happy fucking <laughs> days. So, what are we talking about today, Paul? First of all, before I tell you what we're talking about today, we should get to the other side of the intro. We'll see you there. Oh, hang on, I gotta do one thing. Before we go into any question asking, I gotta say, if you are new to this channel, remember to hit subscribe and hit the notification buttons. We have a giveaway going on at the moment and you could be in with the chance of getting your hands on a free Cheyenne Soul Nova Unlimited. All you gotta do is subscribe, hit the notification button, head over to our Instagram at that tattoo show. And if we get a thousand subscribers, by January the 31st, we will be giving away a Cheyenne Sonova Unlimited with two extra batteries. So, now that's out of the way. It's nearly New Year. We're recording this a few days before New Year, and I'm wondering what's gonna happen, because normally, you know, you have the, the that ball thing comes down in the middle of New York, and your fucking Edinburgh's all lit up and going crazy, there's fireworks everywhere in London. I've no idea at this point if any of that's even, even gonna happen. Is it just gonna be like a sad firework display in, in the middle of something that looks like London from 28 days later? Do you know what, I hope, I don't care about that, right? All I hope is that wherever you are, I hope you're with your friends and your loved ones. I hope you're seeing in 2021, with the people that really matter to you. Yeah. Hold them close. Be thankful that they fucking got to the end of this shitty year. Sink a few drinks, light a few fireworks, have a fucking good time. Uh, and if you can do that, then I'll be right there with you. And I guess that kind of brings us on to like this episode, innit, mate? We, like you, whether you're a tattooist or somebody who's just a tattoo fan or just somebody who likes watching two fucking idiots talking about nonsense, <laughs> I don't know. In our various ways, we've had all, all kinds of good moments and bad moments, and I'm sure you've had, you, you've had the same. I thought I would ask Chris a few questions and we would see what he has to say about 2020 in retrospect. So my first question is, what is the most important thing to you right now? Do you know what? Family. 100% family. Yeah, like. Fucking 100%, yeah. Like family above above everything, like. Yeah, it's a, it's a mad one, isn't it? Short and sweet answer, like, yeah, family. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that this year has, um, you know, obviously, as you know, I've got no, I've got no living family. So uh, my friends are my are my family, they're my replacement family. And you know, and my friends, because of touring with the band and you know, we're traveling with the tattooing and you know, and all that sort of stuff, my friends are scattered all over the world. And this year has reminded me that I need to fucking message them every now and again and check in with everybody and make sure that they're okay. I don't message people nearly enough. 100%, like 100%, 100%. I'm absolutely shit at messaging people back. I'm one of them people that reads a message and if it doesn't require me to respond, I don't tend to, I've made, a real concerted effort this year to respond to messages that it didn't even require a response so that people at least know I'm listening to them. So I agree with you, mate. Family and friends are the most important thing. This is kind of question two then. What matters differently this year than last year? How have you changed your, your priorities, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Putting family first over work. Yeah, absolutely. I think I was so worried... And this goes on to like, you know, I was having to pay a percentage before, mm -hmm. you know, and I was over, I, I had that stress where like, I never felt that I could fucking take time off work because there was like this pressure of like, oh, you're not allowed to fucking have days off. Kind of like being treated like an employee when I'm self-employed. Yep. So I always felt like I had that pressure. Whereas now that I'm a co-owner of the studio, I haven't got the pressure of having to basically pay someone else's fucking wages I've just got to contribute my share to the business. And like, so now I'm like, do you know what? I've got the freedom where if I want to work less, I can. So like, say for example, my daughter's first day in school, someone's booked in. I know that I'm working less, so I can just turn around to that person and be like, really sorry, it's my daughter's first day of school. I'm going to be 
changing your appointment to a different day yeah because family comes family first. comes first so that's what yeah that's one thing family first all the way do you know what matters differently to me this year than last year plans yeah the plan for for me for 2021 is that there is no fucking plan like normally i stress myself out each year by making plans we plan out the year and we know what conventions we're going to do and we know how many tattoos i'm going to do and when i'm going to be on holiday and what days I'm going to do this and how we're going to do this. The one thing that 2020 has taught me more than anything is something can come along and literally fuck all of your plans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this year we've kind of stumbled fucking averting one disaster from another, you know what I mean? And we've still made it through the year. So me and Karen got into a conversation like, literally like a week ago where I went, Shall we just not make a plan? Shall we just go with the flow and just see what happens and just take it as it comes a little bit? That's what matters differently to me this year. I'm just not going to bother making any plans. I'm just going to take it as it comes and it'll be what it'll be. Change direction of this conversation momentarily. What technological thing blows your mind this year? Ooh, there's two things, right? One is the way tattooing um, is advancing. Like, no. The is that the rimmer? that you've got there. That is the rimmer. Oh, yeah, I that's, thought that's it was that. the rimmer. <laughs> Just the way that technology and tattooing is advancing fucking blows my mind. Like, you know, wireless tattooing, I know it's not like a big thing because it's been out for ages, but just like, just, the way companies are engineering their products, like the whole drive mechanism for like something like this is fucking completely unique to that machine. Like, do you mean there's not another machine out there that has the same drive mechanism as this machine? So that's one thing. And the other thing is because I've been like proper geeking out, I've kind of rekindled my love for filmmaking. Uh, one thing that I fucking wish I had a spare fucking five grand or whatever, you know, is the, well, actually two things. I wish I had the money for the Komodo Red the red Komodo camera and the Sony a7S III. So three things actually, technology wise. Two awesome cameras, like one I've been waiting for for ages and uh, the fact that tattoo technology is just fucking going up and up and up and up and up. The one that blows me away this year is the Line 6 Helix. I think it's been out for years to be honest with you. I think I'm pretty late to this party. It's a guitar amp modeling footboard. You put that up the other day, didn't you? Yeah, so, but basically it comes with every good amplifier ever made in the world ever in in the box with all the good guitar pedals all in the box so they're all programmable you can make the rig of your dreams the guitar rig of your dreams is that like the is that like similar to a kemper so it's very similar to the kemper the thing about the, the so they're both modeling amplifiers so the kemper is an amp head that's the one that nipper's got right yeah the thing about this one is it's all of that, but it's in a bunch of foot switches. So you basically, along with the Kemper, like the amp head modeling, you get a custom foot switch. Like, so it's all assignable. You can have all your pedals, whatever you want them, doing whatever you want them. Mate, I've, it, it's fucking blown, blown yeah. my mind this year. I bought one because I wanted to do some recording next year and uh, it's fucking brilliant. So expect me to fucking go on about it a bit next year and maybe show you some examples of me actually using it. I'm sorry, I'll apologise in advance. Don't apologise for talking about something you love. You know? <laughs> but yeah, that's the, bit, that's the bit of technology. That's the bit of technology that fucking blows my mind. What is your biggest fear a year from now? Ah, oh, that somebody will get really jealous, report all of our videos and our channel will get shut down. Joking hell. I wasn't worried about that, I am now. <laughs> I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Do you know what, I genuinely don't like to think about that type of stuff. Yeah, I just think if you, if you dwell too much on what your fears are, I think it can affect you mentally in a, in a bad way. Like, I totally agree. It can send you to a dark place, so. Do you not think if you worry, about your fears, you end up manifesting them anyway. It ends up happening because you're worrying about it yeah. so much. It's almost like you make it happen by worrying. I tend to do the same. I tend not to yeah, worry I about just, I'd rather not. Like, it'll fuck your head up. Like. As Bobby McFerrin said, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Fucking right. The way I look at it, right? It is what it is. It's what it is. What's going to happen is going to happen. If you're going to fucking worry about it, then all you're doing is putting yourself through a bit of pain and misery, then fucking, well, yeah, for no reason. No reason at all. It is what it is. What it is. What's the biggest thing that happened this year 
I don't know if you know, but there was this uh, this new show created on YouTube called That Tattoo Show. Do you know what I've heard about it? Apparently, it's the best it's the best made tattoo show on YouTube. That's what they're saying, kids. That's apparently what they're saying. You know, the best produced tattoo show on YouTube. Wow. Made by tattooists, fucking for tattooists. That's mad when you think about oh, it, though, because totally. that is a really nice compliment, is it? And that's a genuine. That's that's actually been said to us by a couple of companies that we were like. Fucking hell, that's a pretty big compliment, that is. Like, for me, I think it's like, uh, you know, like, even today, right, like, when we're filming this video, because this video is filmed well in advance so we can have a break over Christmas. But today, you got companies like Stigma Rotary commented on one of our videos saying, uh, to get a full picture on the issue of sponsorships, you guys should include a representative of a company in this conversation. A lot of us have some great input on the matter and cool video. You know, when you've got companies like Stigma and you've got, you know, the likes of the owner of FKI Ins that are actively commenting and supporting the channel, you've got Barber DTS, Star Tattoo Supplies, you know, Dermalize, you know, you've, you've got some of the big players in the tattoo industry that are actually coming to us and saying, like, we fucking think your show is really well put together. We're like, wow. Thank you. Considering, though, know, it was started in a conservatory in the kitchen. It's Not like bad. Really fucking... <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an awesome compliment. Like, So, yeah, that, that... You know, but jokes aside, but other than us creating this, you know, misinformation is the biggest thing to happen this year because the Karens of the world that have been taught on Facebook University and things like that, they have potentially contributed towards the... the yeah, the increase in people getting issues with... Co I agree with you. The biggest thing, definitely the biggest thing that's happened this year is we started doing this. And I don't think either of us had any aspirations for probably even beyond the no. end of the first lockdown. We, we had no plans, really. I mean, we've, we've kind of just made, made it up as we've gone along. And uh, again, it comes back to that. Don't make any plans. It'll work out fine. I've even got, all right, I've even got a space because I'm making a little studio space in the house. I've got a blank space on the wall for my silver YouTube plaque. Well, it'd be half a silver YouTube. Yeah, right? we, I'm sure they'll give us two. But I, yeah, I agree that I think one of the biggest things that's happened this year is we've realised that social media and the internet is a breeding ground for misinformation. Ah, oh, totally. And the 21st century, uh, like the watchword has got to be fact check everything. A good percentage of it's going to be bollocks. The irony is, right, you've got people out there giving misinformation that have got fucking thousands upon thousands of followers, thousands of views, and then you've got a question like, are people watching them, right, and following them because they're like, this person's fucking mental, right, and it is really funny to watch? Uh, or are people actually believing in that shit? Because, like, we've put out a video which is genuinely full of fact. It debunks the majority of the nonsense that people are putting out. And, you know, everyone's just like... Mm. Yeah. So it's like, what, you know, are you believing the shit or are you just fucking, you know entertained by the nonsense the people are putting out there. I think that's what it is. Is the truth just not entertaining? You know, the truth is just the truth, right? I do not concern. Uh, in, on that video, if we save one tattooist from losing their shop or going and getting a 20 grand fine for something, then I'll be happy with that. Oh, 100%. Like. As long as it helps somebody somewhere and if it helps, if it helps you, you know, get your head around it, or at least think about checking up for facts then that'll do, you know, don't forget to fact check the information. You should be fact checking us all the time anyway, you know, just because what we're... Oh yeah, fact check so us. Fact check us, we don't care, because I do the fucking research, so I know it's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite movie or TV show from this year? Oh, see, no, I've got fucking three. Go for it, because I've probably got none. I genuinely feel, right, that if... Uh, John Favreau is his name, isn't it? If he was in charge of the Star Wars trilogy, they would have been fucking amazing. And there would be no problems. He's done such a good job with The Mandalorian and selecting the people to direct the episodes as well. So that's one. The other TV show uh, is Star Trek Discovery. Fucking phenomenal. The best Star Trek fucking series they've ever made. The other one, and you will disagree with me, is The Boys. You're right. The Boys was fucking quality. Let me see. Uh, my two favourite TV shows were The Queen's Gambit 
and uh, and The Crane were my two favourite TV shows from this year. Queen's Gambit is all about a female chess player, really, really good. Uh, and The Crown is all, all about the British monarchy. So those were the two TV shows that I really enjoyed watching. I've actually watched a bunch of movies. Obviously, I've had a lot more time this year to watch fucking movies. So I've watched a, a shitload of films that I've, that I've really enjoyed. So there's, there's been too many to think of. There's never been, there hasn't been a film that stands out there. There's not been a film that really fucking... Uh, yeah, there isn't one. There's nothing that's like jumping at me. Like no, I mean, I started the year thinking that I would probably get to see a Bond movie this year, and I'm a big Bond fan. Uh, I thought I would have thought that would have been good, but that's not happening until next year. Now I was really looking forward to that. So, what are your non-tattoo related aspirations for 2021, Chris? I want to make a documentary. Great shout! Great shout! Not like a full-on feature length, but like a 30 minute, I'd love to make like a 30 minute documentary. Or even a 20 minute doc, but fucking most of our episodes are 20, 30 minutes. I want to make a, like a, a legit documentary, not about tattooing, Do you know, it could be about tattooing, but, I, but something, I just, I you know, I've just got this like, I've got a few topics that I think, I think are interesting and I think maybe people would find interesting. Well that might tie in nicely to my aspiration, to be honest with you mate, because I want to make an album. So maybe I could just make the soundtrack to your documentary, you know, because I want to make a full album, but given my previous, my previous output, I'll probably only get an EP done. So if it's a short documentary, <laughs> I'll probably days. have enough music for it. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, that's my aspiration. I want to record, I want to record and release some music only onto the internet you know it's no big deal I'll just put it up on SoundCloud or something but I'd just like to I'd yeah well I'll just stick it straight up on YouTube like straight to YouTube documentary yeah. but obviously for it to do it you know I need to take some time off work and um, I, I need to be able to travel to be able to do it for, for what I want to do alright I got a question for you then go on then how do you feel about the tattoo industry hey uh Okay, I've always been incredibly proud to be a tattooist and be part of the tattoo industry. Towards the end of this year, a little bit less, if I'm honest. I feel like some of the, uh, you know, all that free man on the land business and, and all of that did make us look a little bit silly. Oh yeah. I couldn't really get down with that stuff, you know. I, I, I was just like, you know, come on, do your research and at least do that. I did think it made us look a little bit like what people think of us. They made us look amateur. Uh, Just as fucking amateur, like. you know. And I know a lot of tattooists are incredibly prof professional. I know a, a lot of tattooists are, are great artists, really good business people, very, very professional people. And this made us look a little bit fucking chip shop. I agree with you completely on it. And like one thing I will say, I think this the whole pandemic and this year has made specifically, well, worldwide, but like, genuinely in the UK, it's made me realise how little education a lot of tattooists have in regards to cross-contamination procedures and things like that, because you've got people, like, just genuinely, just fucking, it just blows my mind. Like, people are turning around and going, ah, oh, well, fucking, a tattoo studio is the cleanest place in the world. Why aren't we allowed to open? It's like, it doesn't matter how clean the fucking studio is. If somebody comes in, they are contaminated with a respiratory virus that is transmitted by fucking water droplets that spray out of your fucking mouth when you talk and you are going, well, my fucking shop is clean. You haven't got a fucking clue. And that is what is this, this entire year has made me realise how little knowledge a lot of artists out there, there are tattooists out there that need a lot more training in cross-contamination and all that shit. Okay, so last, um, and this will be the last question for this. Uh, what advice would you have given yourself a year ago? Just save. I would have told, I genuinely, right? I, if I could go back in time, right, into 2019, I would have gone, Chris, do not open a sec, do not open up a shop. Don't try and open up a new studio in 2020 because all the money you're going to put into it and the loan you're going to take out is all going to fucking go to waste. Save your money because you're going to fucking need it. You're going to need it. <laughs> oh, don't blame me, mate. If I could go back and give the 2019, 2020 version of myself some advice, it would be turn the fucking television off. Don't listen to a word. Don't spend too much time on social media and the internet because it will fucking drive you mad. Uh, don't make any plans. Learn to go with the flow 
and just try and enjoy it for what it is. Everything will be okay. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Everything ultimately will work out okay. Don't panic too much. Just try and enjoy it for what it is. Do that, just go with the flow. Uh, shit can happen and shit quite often does happen. Be prepared as they say in the scouts, isn't it? Be prepared, become the last boy scout. Isn't it, like, is that like live long and prosper, isn't it? I don't know, Did, I, was, I, was never in, I was never in the scouts. I was in the scouts, man. You wouldn't be able to tell. You go camping, you'd be like, right, we need firewood for the campfire. Here's an ax, whatever you do, don't chop a tree down because the wood in the tree is gonna be wet. Yeah, I'm a kid, I've got an axe, what am I gonna do? Fucking not chop a tree down? And so I guess with, with that revelation that Chris once was a, a trainee lumberjack. That's pretty mad, like. Uh, I guess we're gonna, uh, that's it for the That's At Usho 2020. I think, and you know, I'm sure Chris is gonna wanna jump in at some point with this. I wanna wish you a very, very happy new year. Oh, totally. I hope you got to the end of 2020 reasonably unscathed. I really hope you're doing okay. I hope wherever you're watching this from, you're watching it with friends and family around you and uh, a drink in your hand and preparing for what can only be a better 2021. And I really do hope that 2021 is better than 2020 for you. I hope it's better for all of us. I think I speak for me and Chris when I, when I say thank you so much for watching the show. It's really made, you know, it's made lockdowns bearable for us. I think for me, it's like, like I just want to say like, all jokes aside, right, you know, when we say like, uh, we don't give a fuck and everything, we, we don't, but we do appreciate every single person that comments, even if it's a negative, we appreciate every single person that watches, that subscribes, that gives us feedback, that helps us be able to bring this content to you like without everybody kind of watching there would be no reason to kind of continue doing it and yeah we appreciate it we're gonna keep doing it for as long as you keep watching and continue it we will i just appreciate every single one like you know hopefully we can do it you know going into 2021 hopefully we can bring more content to you and like the more of you that subscribe to our channel and the more of you that watch and like and comment that genuinely does help us and we will be able to do more videos and bring a lot more content to you. There's the elbow bump for every one of you. There you Boom. go. Thank you very much. And so that's it for the last episode of 2020. Fuck off 2020. Let's look forward to 2021. Hopefully we'll see you in conventions or the tattoo shops at some point in the future. Yes. All of 2021, we're going to be here every week doing this. Tattoo news, views, tips and opinions, and a lot more of the nonsense. This has been That Tattoo Show. We'll see you next year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. See you later. Ooh.